In the episode about types of information sources, we mentioned that many reference materials are being made available electronically. Just what sorts of materials are they, and how do you access, evaluate, and use them? Well, that's the topic for this episode of Research Secrets Revealed. On behalf of Western Nevada College Library, welcome to this series of online tutorials designed to help you become a more knowledgeable information consumer and help you to get better grades. It's rare today to find a library that does not subscribe to some reference resources in electronic format. The big advantage of online reference sources over their print counterparts is that the online versions are more frequently updated with new information. They also offer more features than a traditional print format, and they are available 24-7. Online reference sources may contain any or all of the following types of information. Magazine, journal, and newspaper articles. Encyclopedia type articles. Content from full text ebooks. Dictionaries. Multimedia such as images and video. Directory type information. Links to authoritative websites. And statistical data. Why not just find something on the open web to use, like Wikipedia? Well, remember, anyone can put anything up on the web. When you do research, for whatever reason, you really must evaluate everything that you look at. Although we will explore in depth later in the episode evaluating information sources, it is important to note the credibility and reputation of a source is crucial. Librarians always evaluate the quality of the materials before they purchase them for the library. This includes databases, too. Using the databases the library subscribes to is a real time saver for you, the student. Besides the rich content and the reliability of the information, there are also some great value-added features that really make online databases stand out. For example, you can email articles to yourself or find help on how to format a citation to an article, graphic, or video for your research paper. In addition, the library's subscription licenses often allow authorized users to copy and use graphics for educational purposes. You could paste a graphic, a photo, or a statistical chart into your class research project without having to pay any sort of copyright fee or royalty. Of course, you are obligated to acknowledge the source, which we'll talk about more in the episode on plagiarism and citation styles. However, you cannot use the graphics outside the educational environment or after you've left the college. Where will you find online reference sources? Well, as I've already mentioned, different libraries have different ways of organizing their websites, so when you conduct your initial tour of a library's website, surf around to locate where the online reference sources are located. In some libraries, they may all be located on one page. In others, particularly large libraries, they may be subarranged by subject. At WNC, there is a link to online reference sources and periodical databases right on our home page. Within this grouping, you will see a list of our databases in alphabetical order and a list of them by topic. Below that, there are direct links to the most popular databases. If you click on one of the lists, you will see that WNC provides a brief description of what is available in each database. Consider beginning your research here at good starting places. Two of our largest general databases can be accessed here. EBSCO's Academic Search Premier focuses primarily on scholarly and peer-reviewed journals, while its companion, Master File Premier, offers indexing and access primarily to popular and general trade magazines. Although this sounds fairly clear-cut, there is some overlap. Because these large general databases offer articles and periodicals on almost every subject, they're perfect for general purpose term paper research. If you don't find what you are looking for in the large general databases, or if you know that you're going to want more in-depth coverage, 
you can turn to the subject specific databases such as those in education business nursing and others these databases include many more subject specific periodicals let's take a quick look at EBSCO's academic search premiere remember once you've seen and learned the search interface and features in one periodical database you'll generally find the same or similar interface in other databases the default search for most of our databases is a basic keyword search again just like on the web and in the library catalog but there are other options in EBSCO there's an advanced search link and even a visual search link which organizes results into an interactive visual map so that you can see how items in your search results are related at WNC the default search in most periodical databases is for items with full text only that's because most users want the convenience of only looking through search results that actually have the text or the image of the article you can, of course, turn this feature off. Also note that there is a box that you can check if you only want to see articles from scholarly, peer-reviewed journals. In many databases, you can limit your search to retrieve only articles that were published in a specific date range. Taking advantage of these options can really help fine-tune your searching. Most periodical databases allow you to save your search results into a personalized space for later retrieval. You can also email the articles to yourself, and even have the database develop a reference citation in the style your instructor has requested. Of course, this is a real time saver, but I would caution you to look over the citations before you turn in your paper. They are automatically generated by computer and can sometimes be incorrect. Take some time to check out how these databases can help you and your research. A few minutes now will save you hours of stress later. That's it for this episode of Research Secrets Revealed. Remember, if you have questions, ask your librarian. And thanks for watching.